Hello, this is Alex Runner with another edition of Building Connections, our new podcast from Johnson Controls. And it's my pleasure to be joined today with Jason Chrisman, our Chief Product Security Officer. Jason, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Glad to be here. So, Jason, you've got a fascinating background. You've done a lot of things. You've got a, a ton of experience with information security and cybersecurity and product security in the, in the corporate arena for large companies, but you also have a lot of experience uh, in the U.S. military. So I thought it'd be interesting. Why don't you just tell us a little bit about that? Sure. I started my career after college in the U.S. Air Force, doing, of all things, cybersecurity. And so I was looking at uh, control systems, SCADA systems, IT systems, and how to defend what the vulnerabilities are, how they impacted critical infrastructures back in the day. And after serving a few years in the active duty Air Force, I shifted over to the Air National Guard, uh, where I continue to serve um, as a what they call a drill status or part-time, one week in a month, two weeks a year uh, type of role. And today I currently command a cyber squadron that reports up to U.S. Cyber Command. I'm a colonel and I'm enjoying every minute of it. Wow, well that's great, thank you for your service. So it seems like there are a number of parallels between uh, being in the military, being on guard, being vigilant, um, protecting the nation, and also uh, protecting the security around our products and around a building. And how do you set the tone or how do you instill that sort of vigilance amongst your, your team members? So you're you're right. There there are parallels between um, you know what what I do in the military side and what I do in the commercial side. Oftentimes you're going to find the same kinds of technologies in both, and oftentimes the products that we build do go into business critical and mission critical national security kinds of environments. Right? AC isn't just relegated to the commercial sector. Right? right? Government buildings have it too. Uh, and so we have to be mindful of how the threats are acting, behaving, and what they're doing to get into these kinds of systems. Uh, the impact is greater on a cyber physical target, such as a control system, than it is on an IT system generally. Mm -hmm. So um, our team is constantly uh, out there trolling for threat intelligence, news information about uh, new types of vulnerabilities, new types of security defense mechanisms. Uh, this is an approach that our team has to kind of live, breathe, sleep, everything in order to stay on top of the threat. And then find a creative and effective way to share that knowledge with our developers, with our end users, with our customers, and with our deployers and installers. They have to be able to configure these systems securely when they go out into the field. I, you know, average person who might be listening to this, an average employee at Johnson Controls, when they hear about cybersecurity, my guess is they think about uh, maybe making sure that they've got the right antivirus on their computer, making sure that they have the right firewalls and that, you know, maybe that their, comp their company um, hasn't been hacked and the email system isn't hacked. But you're in charge of making sure that the products that go out with the Johnson Controls name under our esteemed brands are as secure as possible. Can you tell us about those responsibilities? Sure, happy to. So IT security has been around a long time, right? And we all know the dangers and some of the issues involved with data breaches, um, accessing different systems, phishing, stealing personal and private information, uh, corporate proprietary information. But on the product side, we've got at Johnson Controls devices that are touching cyber physical. They're out there controlling buildings, controlling air conditioning, controlling other things that touch everyone's life. And therefore, the software and the hardware, the firmware that we integrate together and build for our products has to be secure. Otherwise, they too will be subject to the same kinds of breaches and manipulation that the IT systems have faced. And so in my role, I look at managing risk across the entire life cycle of our products and at every level of the technology stack. It really is an end-to-end -end view. And the nice part about product security is that because we are the designer and manufacturer of those systems, we have the opportunity to put the right security architectures, uh, design features in from the beginning that will make it better for the customer in their experience of deploying and managing and managing risk with our products. So we have a preventative aspect to what we do. Yeah, that's great. Jason, let me ask you this. What makes a product security program successful? Well, first on my list is that with product security, 
you have to have between my global product security team a strong relationship with the security personnel embedded in the development teams, in the product teams, uh, and the developers for that matter. This is an area where security is really executed at a decentralized level. We want to facilitate the right kind of adoption of security best practices. We want to change the culture of the, the developers and the product teams across the company. And to do that, we have to have that regular interaction, communication, sharing of information, training on how to use these newer tools and approaches. Uh, and, and that is first and foremost, because in the end, what we want at the embedded level is for those products to be designed and tested and released in, in a very resilient way. As you integrate cybersecurity and product security into the product development life cycle, what are some key themes that you emphasize with your team and, and with colleagues in the company? So I would put first that we need to have a good governance, risk management, and compliance approach to our entire program. Mm -hmm. uh, and that all starts off with making sure we have a qu high quality cybersecurity workforce, mm -hmm. raising the level of proficiency across the board. Um, I, I also view very important uh, the need to focus on the developer experience mm -hmm. so that it facilitates them achieving time to market goals, schedule goals, testing everything else for their products, and also the customer experience, right? That, that's also part of the equation. Um, but also looking at security and privacy by design, um, how we facilitate integration of our integrated security tool chain into the dev cycle. Um, we wanna be agile in our management approach, right? Mm -hmm. we, it's a cat and mouse uh, race with the adversaries and hackers and, and technology environment for that matter. So we have to stay on top of that. Uh, and finally, as part of our continuous improvement, we want to enable our businesses and our product areas to be successful. So to the extent that we can come up with new innovations, uh, new intellectual property, uh, new out of the box thinking about how to achieve uh, that market penetration and include security all along the way, that's, that's what makes a good program. So you mentioned the, the IT professional who focuses on traditional connectivity, uh, security with servers and systems. But I've heard you also talk about the, the OT and the, the operational technology such as HVAC systems and security and fire and maybe lighting. And nowadays, all of it is connected or many times it's connected um, with IP entry points. So there are so many other ways that a building could be vulnerable. Is, is that right? That's correct. Uh, the convergence of IT and, and OT, operations technology, is very real. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, the standards that we're seeing, uh, the, the cost efficiencies, the data that can be shared across those networks to learn performance and analyze it and gain insights um, to enrich the, the end customer's experience. So there's a lot of good reasons why these systems are coming together on similar platforms. But that also opens up interface points and exposure points for attackers to get in and, and do more harm. So we have to be mindful of that. And in my role as a chief product security officer, I'm often putting myself in the shoes of the chief information security officer to understand what, what keeps them up at night. What concerns do they have? How can I design those correct security features in to help them in their daily job? You were telling me a, um, a story about a pretty odd way it's, it would seem that someone was able to hack into a building. Um, can you tell us about that? Sure. So uh, there's one thing hackers like, it's a puzzle and a challenge, and they often are patient and they'll find innovative ways to achieve their goal. So a few months ago, uh, there's a story that came out about um, some hackers that broke into a connected thermostat on a fish tank in a casino. Wow. And through that connected fish tank thermostat, they were able to access the business IT network and then steal sensitive information on some of the clients and high rollers of that casino. Wow. So, you know, a thermostat that's on the internet, who would have thunk, right? And so that's, the, there are some very interesting ways that um, attackers, adversaries, people who don't mean us well, uh, can get into a house, get into a building, Think of smart meters on the side of a, a building. Uh, think about uh, those things that have wireless or Bluetooth interfaces, right? Mm -hmm. Or just carrying your mobile phone into your workplace. And if your phone is exploited with some kind of malicious content on there, walking around, it might be sniffing for a signal from one of the access points. 
So you really truly need that defense in depth approach uh, to solve this challenge. Excellent. Well, Jason, uh, this has been tremendous. I really enjoyed talking with you and I know that our employees and stakeholders and customers around the world uh, will find this uh, conversation interesting as well. So thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you.